Welcome back, Wrestling with Ski. Full disclosure, I tried to do this about four times yesterday. First time, that wasn't in view and everything, which is weird, like, yeah. Second time, dog started absolutely losing her mind right around the 20 minute mark. Third time, well, she was out there behind the closed door. She came right outside the door and started doing it again, loud as could be. And then the fourth time, I was well on my way. And without warning, the computer was like, hey bro, you're out of space completely. Like, that would have been great to know. That would have been nice to know before I was out of space, because then I could have went and got myself an external hard drive a long time ago. Yes, I know. Emilia Jesse, you could have looked. Well, never even mentioned, hey, you're almost out of space. So, you know, didn't look. And full disclosure, the cat is in that window. So if you hear a loud bang, that's because she jumped out of said window. And the blinds are slamming back into place. Just full ahead of time. But now, today officially makes the seven year mark. Of what I sat down and watched yesterday morning before the night turned. Terrible. Um, NXT Arrival. It's right in there under the TakeOver category on the network. It's the original one. They weren't called TakeOver yet. At that point, it wasn't TakeOver. It's NXT Arrival. Man, oh man. Oh man. See the talent and the show they put on. It was epic. It was glorious. And I think you guys should sit down and go back and watch it. Like, because it was amazing. It was really, really, really amazing. It was good times. And of course, you know, because it's TakeOver. First one starts out, Dark Arena. And you hear those popular words from one of the guys on this shirt right here. Are you ready? And then, you know, no, I said, are you ready? Yeah. Continue to Triple H doing his thing. Because it is his baby. He's done a great job with his baby. And at one point, like, still probably, his baby was better to watch than anything on the main roster to include pay-per-views. Because you knew it was coming. It was predictable. It was bad. Like, if I missed everything for a whole time, turn on the pay-per-view, I knew it was going to happen just by watching the pre-show. You know, this is how, okay, this is what's going to happen. And you're not surprised by anything. Which is why you know ratings go down and all that. You can't have it so people know exactly what's going to happen before we even get there so that being said this was still a glorious night i mean it was amazing truly amazing see the talent that was on that show where they've gone since then the beginning of some people's characters how many people just to think of how many people have come and gone since that point I mean, it's only in seven years just to think about it is terrifyingly amazing and the first match started out with Sami Zayn still ripped with his original music, not the one that he had for forever that we all know. That is well known to be sung around arenas. At least when he's a good guy, when he's a babyface. He's a heel. Well, not as much. But him against Cesaro, when Cesaro was still doing, you know, with Jack Swagger and Col Zeb Coulter doing We the People, doing all that, like I completely, like, that was out of my mind. Till I turned it on. Like, Get the you-know-what out of here. Like, I completely forgot about it. And it was amazing. It was one of those really good surprises. And the stuff that he was doing with Swagger and all that just goes to the point. I mean, he's, you know, Jack Swagger. Tyson Kidd. Shinsuke Nakamura. The stuff with Sheamus as the bar. I mean, Cesaro has just had a great career, and this match proves why I think he should finally get at least another run before it's all said and done. And a singles thing, to actually be a major player in the main event scene. He's been around, he can do it, we all know he can do it. It'd just be great to see him do it, and that match had everything you wanted. Back and forth, hard hits, submissions, counters. Sammy diving in between first and second rope while running outside. He had to hit people. He got caught with an uh, uppercut this time. But he, you know, it was glorious. To see all of them doing stuff. They even did stuff they haven't seen them do in years. Especially on the main roster. Because once you get to the main roster, we all know how that works. 
you get your set of stuff like Roman, Cena, Randy, like there's so many, you know, you know what they're going to do. It, well, that happened. Oh, now this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. There isn't as much as that in NXT. And it still does happen, but not nearly as bad as the main roster, because I feel they're more in a box on the main roster than on NXT. But all of that happened. All of it. It was glorious. It was a great, great match. It showed how good Sammy was. It still is. It showed how good Cesaro is and why I think he deserves I mean, because he's been here forever, he deserves that push. Singles push for a main title. I hope it happens. Not holding my breath, because, well, I'll be dead before that happens. But it was one hell of a match. And what they put on for the first ever TakeOver match in history ever, really. I mean, it might not have been called an extra TakeOver, but it was the first one. Just to see what they did. That was just pure gold. And that set the bar. That was the first ever match in any you know, takeover since. And they did it amazing. Don't have to like the characters, don't have to like any of it, but just watch it for the match. Like they told a story. The thing went back and forth. You know, ebb and flow is big in wrestling. And they told their story. Cesaro ends up getting the win. Then they shook hands afterwards. It was all good. Sammy didn't look happy. Of course he didn't because he lost. Sammy left. To his old music, which again still blows my mind right now, thinking about it. Like Sammy's old music. How often do you get to hear that? Ever. Ever, ever. It was glorious. But every, like everything they put together, I mean, granted, the next match after that, I mean, didn't set nearly as high a bar. But I don't think they were expecting it to set that high bar. They just wanted to start it off with the bed. Put two of the best that they had out there to do it. Because they know what stock they had in Cesaro at the time. We already knew where he was. He was set. But they know what they had. Has he adapted? Since then, yes. He's found some new things. He does more stuff. He still did the swing and he still did everything. Like, that was a good match. Overall, I can't complain about any of that. Second one. Second like match, I mean, CJ Parker, who I just never got behind anyway. Sorry. Mom's a hippie. All that piece. Like, it just it wasn't my thing. Regardless of my mother, I never liked it. Against Haha. <laughs> Mojo Raleigh. Who people did get behind. I mean there were some behind him and he was doing you know when he came in, people were hyped. Which was the point. People were behind him and he was throwing chops in the corners. And people at least made noise for him on occasion, but that match was just so many crickets. Like I'm pretty sure that's the worst thing. Like, when you're getting cheers, good. When you're getting booze, at least you're doing your job. And there is nothing. Well, last time I checked, that's not a really good reaction, regardless of what you're doing. Might as well pretty much have been ignored. So, could they have done better? Yes. Could they have someone else better? Yes. Is Mojo still around? As far as I know. I was, you know, he was there with Mania with Gronk last year. Um, but it could have been better. I mean, CJ Parker, I think he's gone. I didn't like it at the beginning. You know, beginning of this thing, though, in NXT. Didn't like him at all, and I could tell the people, really, they weren't behind him either, which is a shame for, you know, what they tried to do, but, I mean, sometimes it just misses the mark. And, well, from what we went to, the first match, that match really didn't do anything. For me, or apparently most of the people there. But, yeah, watch it. You tell me. Give me a comment on it. I just thought it was just a dud in general. Which, the next match wasn't, which was the Ascension, who were the champs, defending at the time, the second coming of the Ascension, because it wasn't always Connor and Victor. At one point, Connor was with someone else, Victor was doing a solo thing. But there they were, together. Connor and Victor, the Ascension, as we knew them, defending against Too Cool. You know, from the Attitude Era, you know. Days of wrestling passed, and they still went out there and did a great thing. I mean, Grandmaster didn't get a lot of offense, but he got enough. For them to be there. Scotty made it, you know, he got a lot more offense, made it a match. Did, did, did anyone think Too Cool was going to win? Probably not. Because, you know, we're all smarter than that. But was it, like, it was It was glorious. Like, just to see them there, did the worm. He didn't get to finish it off, but he did everything up until the point. The chop at the end. You know, falling down. Just, you know, but no one expected them to win that match. Like, when they found out, if you thought... They were going to win. You're out of your mind. That was to keep pushing the Ascension. Who at that point, if they stayed exactly doing that, 
and didn't get to the face paint and all the other stuff they did on the main roster, what they evolved into, I think they still could have been around. But, you know, they kept just changing and changing. And I just, when they got to the main roster, I just thought it was too cartoony and dumb. Like, no one had any belief in it. No one wanted it. They all remember the original Ascension. They're just screaming, strobe lights, just, just mauling people. That's the Ascension we want. It was kind of like... The Revival. I never really liked them, but like them, and then when you see them get to the main roster, it's just no one cared. Like they didn't suck people in enough to make them care enough. Did they get the best of opportunities? Who knows? I mean, there's a lot of people have gotten opportunities that like they turned something into gold when they probably shouldn't have. But I mean, that original Ascension, well, the second coming of the Ascension, what they were doing with Connor and Victor before the main roster, I thought they stuck with that. That could, I think that could have been a lot bigger, badder, and better than it ever got to be on the main roster. It's just me, though. Again, you can tell me I'm wrong. I'm open to conversation about wrestling. I just thought that was, you know, just bad. And then we had Paige defending the title, and my dad, Paige was a baby then, like baby, baby. You could just see it. That was baby, 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 baby young. Paige, out there doing her thing. Against Emma when she was still out there happy and, you know, popping bubbles and dancing around and all that stuff. And they did all those. I mean, there's strikes, counters, Emma sandwiches, submissions. Like, they put together a good match for the first ever women's match on a takeover. Like, they did a hell of a job. We all know what Emma turned into at the end. It took years and years... Some hard times, got fired once, and all that, but, you know, like, through her career, all that happened, but, I mean, that was a good run. That was a great match. If you don't like it too bad, convenient to people's opinion, but I thought they put on a hell of a match, and in that match, Emma became the first person to ever kick out of the page turner, which is saying something. Like, at least they had that much belief to make her the first person to do that. And I believe it was, what, the PTO, the page tap out? You know, her submission, which takes, by the way, how much human strength it takes for Paige to hold up the whole body weight of Emma to do that submission and everyone else that she did it to it's just off the charts amazing for the division like she I think you know might not have been the other evolutions they were talking you know, women's evolution but she was the beginning of it like she was that one before you know all the other ones got there and got going and made this big thing out of it like Paige was that one. I don't think she gets all the credit she deserves there. But, I mean, look what she's going against. I mean, Bailey, Sasha, Becky, Charlotte. Like, those four in the matchup Bailey and Sasha had, a takeover. Part of one of the best matches. They got to be the first ever you know, Iron Woman match next. I mean, they got to do all kinds of things. But Paige, I believe, I, mean, she, I think she needs more credit, what she said on it, air. Towards the woman's evolution, she was that first one. And, I mean, but this takeover was so early that they were still calling it the Scorpion Crosslock, at least, I believe. Yeah, William Regal. Because we hadn't seen it before. They were still evolving and still making her do, you know, like she was still trying to do bigger, better, keep it perfect, which you get to do a lot of experimenting and more stuff down at NXT. You just do. There's more freedom. Anyone that watches you, like, for a long time, you're like, yeah, this is a thousand times better than anything on the main roster because you just got stuck in your few moves and deal with it. So it was glorious for me to see early Emma and early Paige go at it and the match they still put on. And we know how many years, like, they kept evolving. Like, it was glorious. Then, after that, you get to go into Xavier Woods. Like, or, you know, still coming out to, like, Brodus Clay, the Funkasaurus, the Funkadactyls, like their music. Still with the big hair, flipping it back, doing the water thing. You know, all that. Dance around, happy as can be, well before the New Day. Just doing his thing, going out against Tyler Breeze. He still had the boots and the look, but this is even before the selfie stick that he carried around with him. I had a long time ago. Long, long time ago. And they both get to the ring, and boom, enter Lana... And Rusev, back when they still called Rusev Alexander Rusev. How many people remember him as Alexander Rusev? Like, we had a first name. Like, I mean, that's how long ago this was. 
I mean, look at everything you know, from Alexander Rusev, Rusev, Rusev Day, like all the stuff he did. Like back then, he was still Alexander Rusev, and barely anyone probably even remembers that. At least those of us that don't have really good memories. But it was amazing. He just came out there, you know, obviously he was going out there to destroy the two people in the ring, obviously. I mean, no other reason he was out there. He went out there, mauled them, did his thing, put, you know, Xavier in the accolade for forever. And there's, you know, there's screaming for his life, all the stuff you're supposed to do in those situations. I think that thud's about to happen. There it was. Fair warning. But it was glorious just to see, like, Xavier Woods at the beginning. The first inception of it, when he was first, you know, really getting up there. Doing the Funkadactyl thing, doing the Funkasaurus thing, he was there. Dancing around. Tyler Breeze, really, I mean, I'm going to say it's just the beginning of the Prince of Pretty. I mean, again, he didn't have a selfie stick, but he was still doing everything, you know, the rest of it. On the B, the faces. Couldn't say anything about the moves or anything, because, well, they didn't get to have a match, they just got mauled. They were fed to Rusev. But, I mean, just look at that. Look what, you know, Woods turned it into. It's a new day. Look what... I mean, he didn't have the best of main run. Main roster run, did Tyler Breeze. He came up, then he vanished, and he was doing the fashion police with Fandango, which... He had another completely different character at the beginning of NXT. You know, his run there. And then at one point recently, they were NXT Tag Team Champions last year. I mean... Like, the run he is still having, he's still evolving, he's still trying to figure out and get that going so he can get back to the main roster. But, I mean, it's glorious just to go back and see them all there, which led into the main event with Adrian Neville. Might add, there's a name, but he still had Adrian in front of Neville. For he was just basic Neville for, you know, forever before he turned heel for the Cruiserweight title. You know, no one was on the Neville level. Like, he turned to the super bad guy, but he was against Bo Dallas. Who, again, main roster, he had a little bit of a push. He had his, you know, thing with Curtis, with The Miz. They were the B-team. What has he done since then? Like, this was his best run when he was NXT Tag Team Champion, defending against Adrian Neville in the first ever ladder match in NXT history. And it had all the stuff that you would expect. First person to go get a ladder? Being Bo Dallas. Boom! Ladder drop kicked in. Neville tries to go for the championship at one point. No. Bo Dallas stops him, puts the ladder over top of him after, you know, to go and climb. Bottom rungs. And Neville ends up pushing the ladder over. So he doesn't get the title. Like, it had all, like, no point in getting into every spot, because they had. Like, you all know ladder match stuff. I mean, someone tries to go, someone stops him, they keep fighting. Someone tries to go, they stop him, they keep fighting. Like, it's all the same basic stuff. Over and over again. So it doesn't surprise anyone. But they put on a hell of a match for the first ever ladder match. They did not disappoint. First ladder match in NXT history. I mean, they put on a show. If you guys want to know what that look was, that was my crazy cat coming in here, and she likes to cause mischief. But, I mean, like, they put on one hell of a show. And, again, Adrian Neville. Like, how long, like, did we just hear him as Neville? Just like Riddle. He showed up. He was Matt Riddle for a little bit. Boom. Just a Riddle. Like, I mean, that was gold back then. They were all such babies, such, you know, like just getting going. Like, Bo Dallas was still just at the beginning, you know, really, I mean, theoretically, the beginning of that whole, you know, Bo Dallas, Bo Leave, all that. Neville was still doing his thing, but as Adrian Neville. I mean, like, that was so crazy to go back and see it all. So crazy. It was amazing, though. It was Truly, truly amazing to see what they did with what they had at the first ever takeover because, you know, the stakes couldn't be any higher. This is the first time they're doing it. If this flops, they don't, like, under, and they underperform like that could have been the end of it right there to think that what they did minus, you know, one match, really. CJ Parker, Mojo, I mean, look what they did. The characters they built, the people they put over, the people they put out there, and the stuff that they did was so amazing. And that was seven years ago today. And that's just amazing to see how far they've come, what they've built NXT into. And all the people that have... Look at all the people that have come and gone since we mentioned this in the last seven years. Like, it's crazy just to think about it. But they did it. And it was so good. So, 
I highly recommend all of you. You listen to this, you got stuff to do, go watch. Go watch TakeOver, you know, NXT, WWE NXT Arrival is what it was called then. But if you go on the network, find TakeOvers and go all the way. 2014 then, go all the way to the end, the beginning of them. And it was amazing. Like, I tell you, you won't be disappointed, you will not be let down. And now as I have to hit a second topic for the day, so I don't have to do a second video because that just seems weird to record, you know, a few seconds for one. Smackdown. You know, everyone had their matches. Do we know what they're going to do between Jay and Daniel Bryan? Who knows? We'll see how that works out next week. But they put on a hell of a match to close out the show. Edge was there doing as well. I picked him to be him, and now you're doing this. Like, you know, so... You know, they're going to find a way to get to it, get everyone happy, you know, no matter who's in the match. I mean, Edge can have a match with anyone, so it'll be okay. And, on a positive note, never mind what happened between Otis and Gable against the Mysterios or any, like, this cares about any of that. Sami Zayn and Baron Corbin. You know, King Corbin's interactions. You know, oh, they could be a great team. Who cares? Like, the big thing we got was what I thought would be the better match from Word 1 for Mania, which was Sasha against the EST of WWE, of SmackDown, whatever you want to call her, Bianca Belair. I think they would have been the better, you know, match, regardless. So... We got that excitement out of the way, so we know what's going to happen there. It's just how they're going to play the story for a couple, you know, what they got, months? A couple months? And they can play it out well. They can really, really build and build and build, which is really the important part about it. So, that's the quick briefing for SmackDown. And I was fighting with external hard drives and all kinds of stuff. But, like, share, comment, tell me what you think. Appreciate all the support. If you want to be on Facebook, follow me on YouTube and Rumble. They're on there too. If you don't know what they are, Jesse Rosinski on YouTube, Bearded Ski on Rumble. All the stuff's there. Everything's there. I appreciate y'all. I really do. I'm telling you though, go back and watch. You know NXT Arrival. Like so underrated. It's like look at all the stuff they've put on since then. Which is the problem. Like they have put on so much good stuff and so much content. So many people have come and gone. They've just kept that level up there that you don't think about it so go back watch it tell me what you think i highly 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 recommend it if you have time to sit down and spend about an hour and 54 minutes watching it and i love you all and the support i appreciate it again like share comment follow tell people have them watch it see if they want to follow yeah the more the merrier the more conversations we can have the better we can do all of this and i appreciate you all have a safe rest of your weekend and until Monday, have a good weekend and peace out.